Hey everyone, how is it going and welcome to my old school RuneScape Solo Bando Sky Wars Dungeon Guide. So lately a lot of you guys have been requesting that I make a Solo Bandos Guide, so I figured today I would share with you guys some tips and tricks and basically just show you how I solo Bandos. General Gridor, also known as the Bandos Boss, is a level 624 boss that is located within the Bandos Stronghold in the God Wars Dungeon. Requirements to enter the Bandos Boss Room are level 70 strength, as well as a regular hammer. Recommended stats to solo Bandos is level 90 plus and other melee stats, as well as 70 plus prayer for piety. Now this last one might seem a bit obvious, but having the highest level gear you possibly can use is really highly recommended. Um, every little extra bonus can help while soloing. Because to be honest, an extra bonus here and there can honestly make the difference between getting an extra kill or not in one trip. Uh, the notable drops for General Gador are the Bandos Chestplate, Tassets, Boots, the Hilt, as well as the Elite Clue Scrolls, and the Bandos Pet. Alright guys, now that you know a little bit about General Gador, let's go over your gear setup. So basically, when you're gearing up for Bandos, you want to maximize your range defense, your magic defense, as well as your slash attack bonus. Which I know can be hard to uh, kind of mix up both, but basically here's the best setup for soloing Bandos. So first of all, a Warrior Helm. A Warrior Helm gives 5 plus slash bonus, as well as around 30 in all your defensive stats. Now this is actually a better option than the Fighter Hat. The Fighter Hat is a reward from the Barbarian Assault minigame. It also gives 5 slash bonus, but it has slightly less defensive bonuses, so you're going to be wanting wearing a Warrior Helm for that slash bonus when you're soloing Bandos. Next, of course, is the Amulet of Fury. Next is the Carol's Leather Top. Now, you're going to want to wear a Carol's Top for that magic defense. Um, Bandos, or the Bandos boss, uses bo um, both melee and range. You're going to pray melee, so you have to tank the range attacks as well as you can. But if you go for a pure range defense setup without the Carol's Top, you get destroyed by the Mage Minion. So this is pretty much the perfect mix. So you're going to want a Carol's Top, not an Armadale Top. Now, Armadale Top would make sense because it has the most magic defense, but it gives, like, negative 15 slash bonus. So, obviously, you can melee with that. So, Carol's Top is the best way to go. Next is Bando's Tassets. Bando's Tassets are great. They give strength, prayer, and are the highest range defense. They are higher than Carol's legs, or excuse me, Barrow's legs. Um, a, good, a good alternative if you don't have Tassets is the Varric Skirt, but again, use Tassets if you can. Next is Bandos Boots. They give 15 range defense. They are definitely better to use here than um, Dragon Boots. Dragon Boots just have the strength bonus, which you don't need that much because you're really trying to focus on accuracy. So you're going to want to use Bandos Boots if you can. Next is Barrel's Gloves. An Abyssal Tentacle. Now, I used to be a person that um, didn't really think that the Abyssal Tentacle was that much better than a Whip. But trust me, you really, really want to be using the Abyssal Tentacle for soloing. It makes a massive difference between this and the regular whip, so definitely use an Abyssal Tentacle. Next is a Dragon Fire Shield. Dragon Fire Shield is probably the best shield to use. It has, well, apart from an Elijah, that is. Um, it's got really high range defense and strength bonus. An Elijah is the best thing to use. Um, a DFS is the next best thing. After that, you could use a Crystal Shield that's got really high range defense, but it doesn't have strength bonus. So, use either a Crystal Shield or a DFS, or an Elijah, perhaps, if you have one. And lastly, the Ring. I wear a Ring of Life because I have terrible internet. Now, I realize you have the 10-minute timer to get back, but my internet sometimes will randomly disconnect and stay down for a while. So, whenever I go bossing, I use a Ring of Life. Now, if you have good internet, you know, stable internet, you're going to want to use a Warrior Ring imbued, not a Berserk Ring imbued. Again, we're really trying to focus on Slash Accuracy, and a Warrior Ring imbued is going to give you 8 plus slash accuracy, which is pretty damn important. So if you are not using Ring of Life, try to use a Warrior Ring imbued. Alright, now onto your inventory. We have a Ceridoman God Sword, a Zami Cape, or any Zami item switch, Bones to Peaches, House Tabs, a Brew or a Store, a Super Combat, a couple of Prayers, a Hammer, and the rest Sharks. So I guess let's start with a Spec Weapon. I use a Ceridoman God Sword because it's very, very accurate. It also heals you and restores your prayers. So as far as what I've seen from my test kills, Cerdo and God Sword is by far the best special attack weapon to use as far as like, you know, having long trips. Now a Dragon Halberd is also a really, really good spec weapon. A Dragon Halberd... <laughs> AVG just popped up on the screen. I'm sorry about that. Um, <laughs> We're going to carry on. Um, a Dragon Halberd is also a really, really good alternative. Um, Dragon Halberd can do upwards of, well, I mean, even off-task, Dragon Halberd can do upwards of 90 damage from one spec. 
So if you don't have an SGS, definitely bring a Dragon Halberd. It's a really, really great alternative. Sometimes you can hit just absurdly high. So overall, bring an SGS if you have it for the extra healing and the accuracy. But if not, bring a Dehali, and it will also do just as well. Uh, any Zamorak item will work. I just use a cape. Bones to Peaches is very, very important. Peaches heal 8 hit points each. So at the end of every kill, you collect all the bones from the minions and General Gador. You turn them into Peaches, and that gives you 32 free health points. So very, very important to have Bones to Peaches tabs. House tabs, pots, and that of thus that is all very obvious. Um, you can switch out the Super Combat with a Super Attack and Strength. It does lose you one shark, but it is a lot cheaper. But uh, anyway, guys... That's pretty much the gear setup you're going to want to be using for solo bandos. Use the best things that you can. Again, some good alternatives for your gear. A Varax skirt works great. A crystal shield would also work. Stuff like that. Just make the substitutions where you need to, and uh, I'll meet you at Gobors. So, the way that I get to Gobors is I use Scrolls of Redirection on the House tab and make them into, tr into Trollheim teleports. If you cannot use these or you cannot teleport to Trollheim, the best thing to do is just to head to Burthorpe and run north and uh, end up at the top of Trollheim Mountain, like I am about to. Um, if you're looking at a solo Bandos guide, you probably know how to get to uh, to or to God Wars by now. So, once you get there, let's uh, just head to God Wars. I'm probably gonna pause this because again, if you're soloing, you should probably know how to get there. If not, just um, get to the top of the mountain, run all the way down, and then just north of the mountain, right here, uh, you're gonna be able to go it down. Again, while I have the map up, I may as well show you too. If, in case you don't know how to get there, here is Burthorpe. You have to have completed the Death Plateau and the Troll Stronghold quest. So just go through here, come all the way up, keep running north, and you'll get to this mountain. And then God Wars is located right here. When you're running past the uh, Thrower Trolls, these guys right here, make sure you turn on Protect from Range. Even at my levels and with this gear, they will hit you a ton through prayer. So once you get to this part, either move the boulder or squeeze through the crack. Then turn on Protect from Melee because there are going to be some Wolves here. And again, they will do damage to you, so... At this point, make sure you do wield your, um, your Zamorak item. When you go down, you're going to get you're gonna get attacked by some Ceridoman monsters, so turn on Protect from Magic. And start running a bit north. They're actually kind of leaving me alone right now, cool. So anyway, run a bit north, and then there's going to be, uh, just to the west of the Zamorak Bridge, you're going to see a cluster of Goblins... This is where you're going to want to get your Bandos kill count. Now, one thing I haven't really talked about yet is Ecumenical Keys. Ecumenical Keys are drops from the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, and they allow you to enter the um, any God Wars boss room for free, I guess. Well, not for free, but without having kill count. So you don't have to get 40 kill count if you use these keys. However, Bandos kill count literally takes like 10 minutes, so it's definitely not worth using keys when you're at Bandos. Anyway, guys, just um, kill the goblins, kill the ogre as well while you're waiting. Just farm these until you get to 40 kill count. Alright, so once you have gotten your Bandos kill count, come to the Bandos room, find yourself an open world, and then set your quick prayers. You want your quick prayers to be protect item, protect from melee, and piety, so set those. Then you can pot up, so drink a brew, drink a store, then drink your supers. You can uh, drop your hammer at this point, put on your fire cape. Enter, and then walk in. So basically, oh, make sure your auto is off. Um, what I'm going to show you guys right now is the method. What you're going to want to do is hit Bandos twice, and then walk under. Now, that might seem a bit weird, but basically the way RuneScape works is on game ticks. So, what you're doing by walking under every second hit is skipping one of Bandos' game ticks, where he would normally be able to hit you. But when you walk under after that second hit, he misses out on one of his potential attacks, and that potential attack can always be a range hit, so it's pretty crucial to walk under after every two hits to save yourself from getting a lot of damage. As you can see, this is a very, very smooth kill so far. I'm going to use my specs. Um, this is a very, very smooth kill so far. I'm not taking hardly any damage, and sometimes that will happen. Um, on average, I get about three kills per trip with this method. Um, there are times, however, you only end up getting two and there are times I've gotten up to 5 without an Elijah, which is incredibly lucky. But uh, this is pretty much all you have to do, guys, is just hit twice, walk under, and hope your hits are good. And that's about it. So I'm going to keep killing it. Use my other special attack. There we go. Oh, 45. Very nice. So when it's dead, turn on Protect from Magic and start attacking the Magic Minion. Um, and this guy right here, Strong Stack, he's going to come up to you. 
Now, if you're a real pro, you can try and pray flick all three, but what I do is just pray mage and then flick on um, melee just in time so I don't get hit by strong stack. Um, you can actually take a, you know, a decent amount of damage from the minions if you're not paying attention, so try and do as much prey flicking as you can, it will save you a lot of damage, which is uh, crucial to getting a lot of kills. When the mage minion is dead, turn on protect from range and continue pr um, flicking on prey melee. If that is what you're doing, kill the melee minion and uh, then continue by killing the range minion. So again, guys, this is pretty basic. All you really need to know is is hit twice, walk under, wait a second, hit twice, and repeat. It's pretty basic. Um, apart from that, guys, the only other methods you could use is the God Sword slash Shield method, which I'm going to attempt to show you on the next one. Now, if I'm using an Abyssal Tentacle and you have fairly high attack, you're going to find that your whip is really accurate, so I don't find this method necessary, but um, I'll show you it anyway. So the minions are all dead, I'm going to collect all of the bones quickly. The boss is going to spawn pretty soon here. So I'm going to try and grab all these bones quick. Use bones to peaches, eat a couple so I can pick my sharks back up. And quickly before the boss spawns, I'm going to run north and use the altar. The Banos altar is basically a free altar you can use once every 10 minutes. So you can only use it like once per solo, but uh, before it respawns, make sure you repot back up. I like to do a full repot, you know, including the brew and everything. So what I'm going to attempt to show you right now is the God Sword slash Shield method. So what you do is you hit it, and then you put your shield on, walk under, shield, I mean, God Sword, hit it, walk under. So basically the idea behind this um, is that you're trying to use the accuracy of the God Sword as much as you can without losing the defensive bonuses. So basically, the, your idea is, is um, the God Swords are really, really accurate, right? God Swords have really, really high accuracy, more so than a whip. But if you use a God Sword, you're generally losing out on the um, the defensive bonuses from a shield. Well, if you use the method that I'm using right now, you can actually um, get all the accuracy from a God Sword and still use uh, a shield at the same time. Sometimes you end up taking more damage this way because if you're using this method, it's kind of pointless to walk under it. So, realistically, I don't recommend you do this. Um... If you use an Abyssal Tentacle and you have high attack, like I said, you're going to find that the Abyssal Tentacle is very, very accurate. So, honestly, don't worry about this method unless you really, really want to try it or you have something like an Elijah and you really want to try and, you know, abuse it to the best of your power. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this kill regularly because this is kind of going south right now. So, I'm going to finish this kill regularly. Um, one more thing, too, I guess I haven't necessarily covered is the use of Guffins. Personally, I do not bring Guffins to solos because I have an SGS and Bones to Peaches. Um, if you do not have an SGS or Bones to Peaches, you might want to consider bringing Guffins. However, Guffins would take up a lot of inventory space if you brought the set. So I would highly recommend if you're bringing Guffins to replace your task sets and your helm with the uh, Guffins helm and Guffins skirt and then just bring the body and the spear as a switch. Um, but to be honest, if you have an SGS and Bones to Peaches, you get plenty of extra healing from that apart from your sharks, so if you have those items, or at least some of those items, don't worry about bringing Guffins. It's, again, more inventory space wasted and can cause you some kills sometimes when a shark would help more. So there is kill number two almost done before I die really quick. This has been a, a relatively average trip. Um, if I didn't use that God Sword method, I probably could have stayed for a third kill. I'm going to attempt the third kill, it's probably not going to happen, but um, generally with this gear setup and whatnot, you can get two to three kills every single trip. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this guide, or if you have any questions, feel free to leave a like and a comment down below. I kind of messed up what I just said there. Let me redo that. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video. If you did, or you just found it useful in general, feel free to leave a like. I really do appreciate it, and it helps the channel grow, and... Um, Feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or concerns with the guide. And uh, anyway, guys, good luck Bando soloing. I hope you all get a pet and some Bando's pieces, which I am unable to do. Rip me. Anyway, see you guys later. Thanks for watching.